Good morning, Mr. Bright. Good morning, Kevin. Hey, morning, how are you? No. Yes, good morning. Uh, let me hope you, uh, you can hear me. Yep, morning. Okay. Uh, Mr. Luca, can you hear me? Yes, morning. Morning to you, Mr. St. Okay. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Bright, uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Okay. That's good. Yeah, so today's session it is the sixth session, and uh, we know we have uh, we're supposed to have ten of them. Yeah. So since we've uh, we we actually passed the middle, uh, I'm going to use the first one hour to cover what we're supposed to cover. Then the last one hour will be about uh, uh, receiving like uh, some feedback, some suggestions or some, maybe you tried something and it failed. Yeah, that's what we shall use for the second hour for. Hope that one is, is okay with everyone. Okay, because it, it won't be beneficial to just cover up to 10 sessions and uh, Okay, if, if you don't practice as we cover in the sessions, you realize that after the, the whole program, you try to do certain things and they are not coming out. Yeah, so that's why I'm dedicating the last hour to look into that. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, can you see the screen? Uh, yeah. All right. Okay, so today we're going to cover activity constraints, then also activity codes. Yeah, so activity constraints are uh, those are kind of like uh, conditions that you put on the start and the finish date of uh, an activity. Yeah, so for example, you may want to put a deadline for an activity. That is a, that is a constraint. So you're putting a deadline. Then you may, you may want an activity to start as early as possible. That is a constraint. Or it, is, it should start by this particular date. That's, that, that is an example of a constraint. Yeah, so that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, the, the introduction, the types, and how we do that in uh, Primavera. Then after that, we're going to look at activity codes. Yeah, so now this uh, may sound a bit different from what it exactly means because it is not about the WBS, uh, the codes as the WBS, uh, okay, behaves. But what it means is that you may want to organize your project activities according to a certain thing. For example, according to the location, according to maybe a contractor, you may be having a very big project in that uh, some parts were taken by certain subcontractors. So you may want to organize your project according to that. 
that's where the activity codes come in. Yeah, so we're going to look at what they mean and the, the various ways. Uh, we may not exhaust everything, but we give you an insight on how you can use them. Then we shall go ahead to see how you can implement so in, prim in Primavera. Yeah, so starting with the activity constraints, I uh, already said uh, those are kind of like conditions that you put on a start and a finish date of an activity. Yeah, it, it, they are mostly used to manipulate the start and the finish dates of an activity. So some of the, okay, not some, all of them, uh, because these ones are available in Primavera. Yeah, the first one, uh, it's called as late as possible. Yeah, so if you put uh, a constraint of as late as possible on an activity, it means that uh, that activity can be delayed can be delayed as late as that particular date. For example, uh, if uh, we talked about floats uh, last time, though we didn't go into detail, but a float is kind of like the number of days in which you can delay an activity and it doesn't affect uh, the, the, the entire project duration. So if an activity has a float of five days, it means that that activity can be delayed by five days and nothing will, will happen to the finish date of the entire project. So if you give that activity a constraint of as late as possible, it means that you're giving freedom to, the, to yourself or the people executing the project to delay that activity to the maximum of its uh, float, total float. That is the five days. So if it has a total float of five days, it means that you can delay that activity as late as possible. That is the five days. So if you go be if you go beyond five days, it means that uh, you're going to delay the the entire project duration. So that's one of the constraints. That is as late as possible. So if that one can only be assigned to, to activities that are not so essential and never assign that to a critical activity. If it is a critical activity and you assign it to that, it will tend to be a non-critical activity because critical activities can be delayed. So you can't assign uh, as late as possible constraint to them. Yeah, so is it is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, they are we're going to see in Primavera, it is, it is not hard to, to assign, but like you have to, fi to first understand uh, each constraint very well. Yeah, you, you'll go ahead to, to make more research or read through the, 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 the material that was provided to you or online or anywhere just to, to get a deep understanding of them. Yeah, then there is a finish on. Remember these are dates. You have to, to assign a constraint, then you, you also select a date. So like the first one, if you choose as late as possible, you have also to choose a date. Yeah, for that. Uh, there, there are few that don't, don't require a date. Uh, there are few that don't require a date, uh, like, uh, Actually, the first one doesn't require a date because it is for it, it is as late as possible. But these other ones, you have to, to assign a date. If you say finish on, you have to go ahead to select the date that you're talking about uh, finish on. Yeah, so the second one is a finish on constraint. It means that that activity should get, should be finished on then that particular date that you selected, for example, if you say it is a finish on uh, uh, 22nd July, now that means it's going to ensure that that project or the schedule, when you, got, when you go back to schedule that project, it's going to force it to get done on that particular date that you've put. Yeah, then 
there is a finish on or after. So this one uh, gives uh, the morale for that activity to be finished either on that date or after that date. So it means that it can be delayed because it can be finished even after that uh, particular date constraint. Then there is finish on or before. Yeah, so for finish on or before, it means that it should be finished on that particular date or before. So there is no morale to, to finish that activity after that particular date that you selected. Yeah, you may ask uh, if I put and I don't, okay, for example, in the project schedule, you put that uh, this particular activity is a finish on uh, 10th July. And when it comes to reality, you don't, you don't exactly finish on that particular date. Yeah, so there you're going to see in the next session how you update the project. So that will come in when you update the project so that you remove the constraint or you input like the real dates, like the exact start and the exact uh, like finish. Like you put exactly what happened in the field, but now here we scheduling and the constraints are always put at the start of the project. So here you're coming up with a project schedule. So in case uh, you put a certain constraint on an activity and it has a predecessor, some of them, as we're going to see, can override the predecessor uh, option. Yeah, I'm going to show, you, to show you examples for that. Then we have a uh, number five, that is mandatory finish. Yeah, so the mandatory constraints, because uh, we have a start constraint, then those that belong to finish, then mandatory. So for mandatory, it is like, uh, it's like a must. Yeah, so if you say it is a mandatory finish, it means that that activity should be finished by that uh, date. Yeah. Then if you say it is a mandatory start, it means that it should it should start or it must start on that date that you've selected. Now, this is where the example of a predecessor comes in. If you, if you have a project, if you have uh, two activities, you have activity A and activity B. Activity B uh, depends on A, but A is, go is going to get done on 10th July so that activity B can get started. So if you if you if you go to activity B and you put a mandatory start of uh, remember the activity A ends on 10th July and you put it uh, to have a mandatory start of 8th July that is a date before task A gets done it's going to override the predecessor it's going to override the predecessor choice yeah even if it it depends on the other activity but now you put a mandatory start so some of the things a software won't be able to recognize. So it's about you to put uh, like uh, meaningful dates when it reaches to your activities. So you should be keen about as you are signing uh, activity constraints. Yeah. Then uh, we have a start on constraint. That is uh, that activity should start on that date. Then there is start on or after. So start on or after, it means that it can be started on that or it can be started after. Then start on or before, it gives them mandatory for activity to be started earlier or by that date. Those are some of the constraints that uh, we have. So is there any question on any of those? Uh, as early as possible is not a constraint. As as early as possible. Is it not a constraint as well? Uh, I it, it as early as possible. Okay. Uh, as early as possible, because we have a start on where it it can also belong to that. Like it should start on that particular date. Okay, as early as possible is. I think it is not there in Primavera, though it, it may sound like correct. 
anyway, I'll check and see whether or, it is or being clear. Start on or before. I think you'd use start on or before. Anyway, we shall see in Primavera, but I think it's not uh, there as as early okay. as possible. Okay, we shall see, but you can see these two, they start on and also start on or before. So it kind of like belongs to that. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so we, we, we shall see how you assign them to Primavera and the way they can affect uh, like the dates. Yeah, so after that, now we have uh, activity codes. So I said uh, activity codes are used to, to help you all to, to, uh, to classify, categorize and organize activities based on your organization's reporting needs. Uh, by reporting needs, uh, uh, we mean it may be about, uh, okay, you may follow the way the BOH is arranged, or that's that's how you may want to report your, your because as the project is going on, you'll have to, to issue out reports on the progress. Yeah, and in, in the last sessions, like the eighth, or ninth session, we shall look at reports, how we generate reports. So it depends on how you want to report uh, your activities or your project progress. Most of the people may be interested or some organization may be interested in, uh, they, they have a project, they put it in different phases, then they want to report per phase. Or if it is a big project, uh, maybe it is a road project, uh, you have like, three other subcontractors. As you're reporting, you also want to report the parts that have been done by those subcontractors. So that is also another way of organizing your activities. Yeah, so the project schedule here, as you're scheduling, you schedule it in a normal way. But now when it reaches that, uh, maybe uh, you have a road project of 50 kilometers and the first 10 kilometers have been assigned to BS consults or contractors. They are going to do that, but remember that is a section and it almost has the same, same, same activities as the other sections. So for the project shed, you may just use a, you may just use the simple shed you or like a, the normal shed you, but when it reaches to that particular section, you assign it to a particular contractor so that some of the activities that belong to that particular section are grouped under that uh, subcontractor. We shall see it in practice. That's where you'll, you'll be able to realize uh, how beneficial it is. Yeah, but uh, what you have to, to know is that activity codes are usually created and assigned at the beginning of the project. So it's better you create them at the beginning of the project or like as you finish the schedule. Yeah, because when, when you, you expect to start a project, you come up with a project schedule then after approval by the organization, by the entire organization or by anybody that's supposed to approve your project schedule, you have to set it as a baseline. When you set it as a baseline, it means that you'll be able to track and get to know, are we still on the, like we say this, uh, this activity is supposed to take 10 days. Have we taken the 10 days we're supposed to take? Yes. Have we taken eight days on this activity? No, they have been 10 instead of eight. So you have to come up with a report uh, why, you, uh, why you like there was some time overrun and how is it going to affect the, the overall project? So that is the reason as to why the activity codes should be set before you don't set them after. When you set them after or during the project, it you will miss out on reporting. Yeah. So uh, these are uh, activity codes can be used for like the following one. <clears throat> they can be used to group and sort activities into specific categories in the activity table and layout. Yeah, we've, we've talked about that. The specific categories like phases, location, 
subcontractor etc then uh, they can be used to summarize activities also in filtering uh, also as you building reports yeah in the report uh, wizard then also uh, now these are some of the activity codes uh, examples that is phase location responsibility subcontractor yeah then after that uh, we have uh, there are different levels on which you can set uh, the activity codes one we have global then two eps that is the enterprise project structure then three project yeah so as calendars the way you see calendars you can do global and uh, projects for activity codes you can do global meaning that that uh, that activity code will be available to all the activities or to all the projects that you create in an entire organization yeah then eps that is enterprise project structure that means that that activity uh, code you've created will be available for a particular enterprise project structure then for projects you can create it and they are only available to that specific project that is currently open. So now that means if you go to other projects, you won't be able to access those activity codes. Yeah, so is there any question before we go into the practical bit of it? Uh, can you help me repeat again the difference between these activity codes and the work done structure codes? The difference? Yes. Oh, actually, they are totally different. Just that it sounds, uh, that's why I, I also talked about it at, at the start. The WBS uh, codes, for them, it will, it will just uh, be about the level. For example, you have an entire project, then from the entire project, uh, let's say it's a residential building, you have the preliminaries, so that can be given one. Then you have the substructure that can be given two. Then you have the superstructure that can be given like three. So the things that come after preliminaries, remember it is one. So for it to say it is 1.1, then you have 1.2, then you have 1.3. And then you go to another one like a sub a substructure 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, like that. So those are the WBS uh, like codes. But activity codes, for them, they are not in terms of numbers. It's uh, we're basing on certain thing to group. Uh, let me go back to this. You see like here, the examples of activity uh, codes include phase, it can be phase, can be location, can be responsibility or subcontractor or any other things according to the way you want to report your project. So when you're using WBS codes, it doesn't stop you from using the activity codes. Now, because you will find that uh, on a certain level of WBS, now there is a certain subcontractor handling those uh, activities. Or you may find that they, they are you carrying out a, an entire project, but there are some activities are going to be done in a particular location, then others will happen in other locations. So when it comes to to the activity codes, for it, it will filter according to, to the location. So it will also include the WBS codes within it. Let me hope uh, it's a bit clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Thanks, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, those who have maybe issues with audio, you can type uh, in the chat. Okay, I think uh, we're good to go to the practical session. So, Now uh, we, we're going to look at uh, constraints first. So I'm, I'm opening this uh, project. 
Yeah, it's in the it's in demo in one of the demo projects or the demo data that is inputted. So what I'm going to demonstrate from. Yeah. So in order for you to to assign a particular constraint on an activity, select the activity that you want to, to assign the particular constraint to. Then you come to you come to the details uh, dialog, this, this one here. It's called a detail window. Then you change from whatever tab you are, because I'm now at general. You come to status. Yeah. So it is it is from status that we shall uh, we able to do certain adjustments. Some of them we've not yet covered them, like uh, started, finished. Yeah, so this is where I'm going to find the constraints here. So in order for you to assign a constraint, come here under primary constraint. Uh, the difference between primary and secondary, uh, you most of the cases you see that the secondary constraint will not be active. It will it will uh, it will go for primary, but what it means is that first consider this. If it is not possible now, you can go to the secondary constraint. Yeah, but uh, that is very rare that you're going to use both of them. Yeah, so these are the constraints that we have. You can see by default, uh, every activity comes when it has no constraint attached to it. Yeah. So that is why it is in none. Then we have as late as possible, have finish on, we have a finish on or after, we have finish on or before, mandatory finish, mandatory start and start on. Then start on or after, start on or before. So there's no as uh, early as possible, it's just as late as possible. So all you need to do is just select, select the constraint, then now after that, uh, to, for you to see the, di the difference, you just have to click on schedule. That's where you can see the difference. So let's, uh, let's try out one by being keen about that date. So you can see we have this activity that is review technical data in first increase on this, on heat pumps, and it starts on uh, 30th uh, September. Okay, I'm going to add another column called uh, float, total float and free float here. So that when we, we assign certain constraints, we, we see whether the, whether the float will be affected or not. So in order for you to add the column, you come up here under columns. Then you, you look for where it belongs. So in case you're not sure, I just click on available options, click on find, and I can type in uh, like float. So there's free float. I want to look at free float and also total float. Uh, let me put them at the end. I just paste this. Okay. Yeah, so now we can see, we're mostly interested in this uh, total float. So we can see there are certain activities that have a, uh, like a lot of days and they are floats, meaning they, they can be delayed. They are non-critical activities. Yeah, so we're going to adjust some of the constraints and we see whether our float will be affected. Yeah, so select the first one. Uh, we give it as late as possible, then we try to schedule. The, the total float is 68. Then we schedule again. It stays the same, why? Because now this is as late as possible. So it is like we, we're giving 
uh, the morale to enjoy all the total floats of the, the, all the days that it can be delayed. So there can't be any effect on the float of, uh, of that activity because we've selected that it should be done as late as possible. Yeah, so let's try to, to use, uh, now this is, a, this is a finish. Okay, it starts on 30th September, then gets done on 25th October. But it has a total float of 68 days, meaning that it can be delayed by 68 days without affecting the entire duration, the entire project duration. So I'm going to choose a different constraint, like a start, okay, finish. And I ensure that I don't, uh, okay, I pray within these days. Yeah, so this is 30th September, 25th October. So maybe I'm going to say it is uh, finished by, let's say 15th October, and we see whether the total float will be affected. So we come and look on uh, finish on, okay, finish on or before. Finish on or before, then we change from 25th October to like 15th. Yeah, click select. I go to schedule. Actually, it has automatically, it has already affected. So you see now the, the float is now in negatives, like the float has been affected. So it means it means that what I've assigned is actually not it's not uh, like possible. Why the duration, the duration that is required to to complete that particular activity, is uh, like here it is showing eighteen days, but the data I've chosen, they are less than eighteen days. So the total float is within a uh, it's negative seven. So let's add seven days onto the top of what we've selected, like from 15th to like uh, 22nd. Uh, it is reducing, I just want it to be zero. Let's see, one, two. The reason to, for that is uh, because they are weekend, they are weekend days and the project, the project calendar, you may find that you don't work on weekends. So, I had to select, uh, I selected Saturday, I had to select uh, maybe a Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, so now it has a total float of zero. So that is an example of how you can use uh, like constraints. Uh, I don't know whether that one is clear or I can repeat, can I repeat or I repeat with a different constraint? You repeat with a different constraint. A different constraint, I think. Okay. All right. So we're going to repeat with a different constraint. So I'm going to remove a constraint from here. Back, put it back to none. Then all the floats will get back. But yeah, maybe what you should know is that these activities are they are interconnected like they are they are depending on each other so the moment the moment i change okay the moment i put a constraint on one of the activities it's also going to affect others that depend on it unless it doesn't have dependence yeah but the moment i i i change for example this activity was supposed to take uh, five days but now I've put a constraint and it must be finished in three days. So now that means the activity that comes after, it's going to, to come after that one is done. That's why you see that other activities also get affected because they are all linked or connected to each other. Okay, uh, we have a question from Mr. Bright uh, asking about what is a float and its significance. Okay. Uh, is there anyone that can answer him? Uh, what is a float and its significance? Yeah. 
anyone, Mr. Kevin, can can you try to explain to him what a float is? Float float in relation to an activity is the number of days by which a, an activity can be delayed. So like the freedom within which you can continue working with, in, with, on an activity without delaying the project. So if, a, if, if a, an activity has like two days float, it means um, if it is supposed to, if the schedule says it is ending on Wednesday, it can, it has the liberty to, 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 go, to, to go until an extra two days without delaying the project. So that's why, I, that's why critical activities have zero float because when 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 the, they cannot be delayed, it means if you delay them, the project schedule will change. That's why they have zero float. I don't know okay. if that's clear. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bright. Is it uh, clear to you? Maybe you can send a message. Okay. Yeah, but uh, there are different names. Eh? They call them. It can be called float. Sometimes it's referred to as slack. Yeah, slack or float. Yes, but that that is it. That how many days can you delay that particular activity without delaying or without passing the completion date of uh, a project? Yeah. Okay. If you need like a technical like definition or what, you may say delayed from the early start the early start date of an activity. But uh, I think they will go on to, to make more research about it because they are, if we to go to different, uh, that is like in project management, early start date, early finish. Yeah, but a float or a slack, a number of days or the duration by which you can delay an activity without affecting the completion date of the entire project. Yeah, so the example here is like uh, this, this particular activity has a total float of uh, 68. Let me first remove a free float. Uh, I don't. Yeah, so this particular activity has a total float of 68 days. So now that means that particular activity can be delayed by 68 days without affecting the completion date of an activity. So if you can calculate now from its start is by 30th September. So now that means even if you start it in November, because 68 days are like three, two months and eight days. So you count the whole of October, then also November, yeah, so December. So now that means even if you start it in the first week of December, you're not going to, to delay the, okay, you're not going to go past the completion date of, an, of a project. Yeah, so that's what it means. Then if you find a total float on, on levels, now like this is design and engineering and it has 68, it gets it from these other activities, but it's not about addition. Because this is 68, 68, 68, 68, but you can see also for this level, the entire WBS level is a 68. So most of the time it will take the highest, the highest, yeah, the highest from any activity like here. We have an activity with 420, then here we have others that have 165, 165, 165, then for it, it has a 420. Yeah, it is the same thing here down. Sometimes it will take the highest, or it depends on the days or the, the date. There is a way it calculates. It depends on the dates to come up with a float for the WBS level. Yeah, so let's continue with the constraints. We want to put a constraint on a, okay, you can only put constraints on, on activities. If you select a project, this will be frozen. So it, you can't edit from here. You can't put a constraint on like a WBS level or an activity. 
if you want to put a constraint on the entire project, you do it as you're creating a new project. Yeah, you try to create a new project. It will give you that option of constraint and you can put uh, like a deadline. So it, it can be like a must finish by. Yeah, so I'm going to put a constraint on this activity, assemble technical data for heat pump, come to status. And I come to constraints and I choose one of the constraints. So let's look at its finish date. So its finish date is 29th September. And it starts on 22nd September. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a finish on by I'm going to put it like it should finish on two days before. And you see what happens. If you say uh, that is 29th, so I can put on 27th. And by that, that will not make sense. Why? Who can tell me why, why like 27th will not be real to select as the the finish on date. Let me first remove the constraint. Yes. Yes, Mr. Kevin. Is it because it's duration is five days? Is it because of the duration? Yeah, it's because of the duration. Here we can see the difference between uh, 22nd and 29th. Uh, those, they are seven days, but remember they are two days of the weekend. So it, it only has five days, but it has uh, a total float of 68. So now that means it can still take five days, but it can be delayed, like it can be started after. So if I come and I put a finish on, and I put it to like uh, 29th to the exact date that it was scheduled to be finished. It's total flow to go off. It will stay with zero total float. Because now we said it should be done by 29th September. And it is here on the start, it is starting on 22nd. So it no longer has float. It's becoming now a critical activity because now we've squeezed it in those first five days as its duration. But if we were to change, like uh, to finish or no after, you can see that now the total float comes back to 68. So it means that it can be finished on or after that particular date. Yeah. I don't know why yeah, you're trying to, to pick uh, the logic behind them. No? Yeah, I get it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Luca, is it, uh, is it clear? No, I'm a bit confused, so maybe you can, you can go through it again once more. Okay. Okay. Uh, we said uh, activity constraints they put uh, conditions on the start or the finish date of an activity. So on the start date, if you come, if you say that this activity has uh, a constraint of, uh, let me start with the start. It has a constraint of a start on and you select a particular date. Uh, it means that in either way possible, that activity should start on that date. Then if you say that uh, it is a finish on, it means that everything should be done, but that activity should be finished on that particular date. So we've been using total flow to see the effect on which it has on other activities. That uh, when we start that all the activities don't have constraints onto them, 
Yeah, and also there. Yeah. You can see that they have their total float, those that are not critical. This one has a total float of 68. This one has a total float of 68, 68, 68, like that. Yeah, according to the way they were scheduled. So if I come to any activity now, like this one, which has five days, and it is it was scheduled to start on 22nd September, and it gets done on 29th September. Yeah. So when you look in uh, between 22nd and 29th, there is a weekend that is uh, 24th and 25th. So now that means it only has five days to get done. One, two, three, four, five to get done. So if I come and now say that it should, like I'm putting a condition that this activity should be finished on, then I put a date on which it should be finished on. If I put the same date, its total float is going to go back to zero. Why now there is no more freedom for it to be delayed? Because it is going to start on 22nd and you put a condition that by 29th, it should be done. So it no longer has a float. So if you put a date before that, the float is going to go into negative. Like if I put a 27, click on select, the float is going to go into negative. Uh, what that means is that uh, what you've assigned is not, okay, it can't happen in reality. Like here, the software has accepted, but it can't happen in reality. Because you say that duration of the activity is five days and it is starting on 22nd September, but you're saying it should get done by 27th. So it's not, it, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not really like you can't achieve that. That's why the total float is negative. Yeah, then in case maybe to fix that, either you can adjust that date or you can reduce on the duration. If I put back to three, you can see that now the total float goes back to zero. So all these changes, you can also see them in the chat, in the GAN chat. Like any adjustments that we make, when we put this one back to five, you see that uh, there's a way it, it affects other activities. Some have been critical, others go back to one being non-critical like that. So every time you change a constraint, ensure that you go back again to schedule so that in case it has not automatically scheduled, it, it schedules. Uh, why I'm saying you go to schedule, you may find that you forgot to go to options and tick this schedule automatically when a change affects dates. So if this is not checked, when you change, when you change something, it will not automatically reflect the way ours is doing. Yeah, so just to be sure, just always click on this or press F9 on the keyboard, then it, it schedules again. I don't know whether now it's a bit, uh, maybe you'll make more reading about it because it is more into understanding the concept than applying it here in the software. Uh, Mr. Luca, is it is it okay? We can move on now. Yeah, we can move on. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah. So let's try to be quick. Yeah. So now we're going on into uh, the activity codes. Yeah. So for activity codes, I would like to put a disclaimer that. Uh, can look a bit confused at the start, but when you, you go on to implement it by yourself, it will become more clear. Yeah, so let's head into activity codes. So in order for you to access activity codes, you go to enterprise, then you look for activity codes. If you don't see it, just click on this drop down. Then you look for activity codes. Yeah, it, it will bring a warning uh, there, I just press okay. Yes, so these are the different uh, levels that I was talking about. There is global, then there is EPS, then there is project. 
yeah so this particular project that i've opened it is uh like uh they haven't yet used the activity codes so i'm i'm going to start on using them if they were already there they would be appearing here under the drop down but they are not so i'm going to add project the activity codes but on the project level not uh, the global level the difference we said when you apply it on the global it will be available to other like any other eps any other anyone that uses the software that will be available that's why you see that when i go to global there are certain activity codes that are there when when you apply to a P eps it will only apply to that particular eps where the, the project belongs if you go to project you only apply to the currently open project so we're going to do project activity codes click on modify then under modify now you can add uh, a particular activity code so with this uh, mm, okay i'm going to use subcontractor uh, then location yeah let me use subcontractor then location so i'm going to add a subcontractor and add another code location so this is also like a tree the way we do eps and everything so these are like the definitions like i'm going to have a subcontractor then i go to location but i'll come i'll have to go back now like to the values and i list down the subcontractors that i have then i also list down the locations that i have yeah so click on cross then now you can come and see that under activity code we have location and subcontractor so this is where now I can define the different subcontractors that I have. So click on subcontractor, click on add. I add the value, then I add the description. Then I'm able also to change the color. Like for, for that activity that belongs to that particular subcontractor I should take on this particular color. So I'm going to use maybe MK constructor. Let me just say. contractors okay uh yeah it has a limit uh you you supposed to modify it from here click on modify there's this maximum length you can increase it so that uh, the name is it allows a uh, lengthy names By default, it is seven. So if you type and say it is not accepting my name, you just go and modify the link. So you can put the, the description. That in case you want to change the color, just click on color double click and select the color that you want to use yeah but uh we're not going to go so much into that i'm going to leave it to have the same color so i can add another contractor okay. Yes, like that. So in case I want to add now the others in location, I can have uh, maybe east, this for east.
Yeah, like uh, it depends on how, how you define your locations, like in the organization or the project. Yeah, it depends on the project. If it's a road project, it may cut across different uh, like regions. Or if it is location, it may just be like uh, towns, villages, uh, municipalities, like that. But if it is a building, you will find that maybe you're constructing a school and you want to, to call to send north and east like that. So you have the morale to, to customize or to call it any way you want. Yeah, so I'm going to stop on that. Uh, you can see this. This means that you have the morale to create a certain tree. Like under East, you can add, you can add something and you indent it under that. Yeah, so when, when you try pr to practice, so like to do exactly what is on the ground, you see that it's supposed to be indented under this like that. So I'm not going to use it. Just going to leave it to that. Then now I can cross. Yeah, so when you define activity codes, they can also now become, they are kind of like uh, columns. They will be available in the columns. So when I come to columns, then uh, I want to add a column when I come to available option and click on find, then maybe I uh, search for location. You see that it is now there. We have location and subcontractor. So I'm going to just add those two. And also subcontractor. So before, before I defined activity codes are not there. So we can move the total float so that we decrease. Click on apply, select OK. So for now, we can see that every activity is empty of every activity. So there is no activity that has, is yet assigned to that particular subcontract and there is no activity that is yet assigned to that particular location. Yeah. So how do you assign now the activity codes? You come to the detail window and you look for codes, but it's not there on the tab. So if it is not there, right click on this, go to customize activity details. Then it also has the option to add more tabs. So we need to add codes. Click on apply, then okay. So now it is there. So it is the same thing you go into in, in case you want to in case you want to remove maybe status and you remove it or in case you want to add more things. Yeah. You can decide to add all of them at once, like that. Click on apply so that in case you're looking for something, you don't uh, like you make okay, you may forget or now they add it. So from here, I just go right click. Uh, select custom, uh, customize activity details and you add all of all of the tabs so that they are all active. So now I'm on this code. So I click, how do I assign? I click a particular activity like here. Yeah, so these ones that I, that are appearing, uh, they are the ones we saw under global. Under global, like under, under global, there were some activity codes that were assigned on a particular level, but for us, we want to assign now these ones we've just created on a project level. Yeah, so you select an activity like this. So we want to say that the first, the first phase, designing and engineering is assigned to MK contractors. So come select the activity, come under codes, ensure that you under codes because you may be under resources and it also, okay, you may be under predecessors, it also has assigned. 
that will be about predecessor. Just come under codes, click on assign, then change, change from global and you come to project. Yeah. So you can see under project now select the activity. Then now you come and select like uh since we have two two things, you can assign it a subcontract and show it the location where it belongs. So I can say I'm assigning it uh, to MJT. Click on assign. Then I can also assign it like I can say that it belongs to the east to the east, like that. Select another one. This MJT it is also on the east. Then this MJT, but maybe for it is for north. Yeah, like this. This is for demonstration. To be, it may not be, but it depends. Actually, you you try it in the assignment that you have because the assignment you're working on something that is real. So, yeah, like that. Then you can click on cross. So you can do the same thing to these other ones. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, in case, in case there are no level, there are no codes that are assigned on the global global like level. Because this, this project, I already found it there. So they assigned some codes at the global level. You'll be able to select many of them, many of the activities, click on assign, then you assign it. But now since that they, there is already global, some there are some that are assigned on the global level. So that's why it is not active. So you will have to do one by one. So now, how do you filter it? Yes, you may say I only want now projects that uh mm, okay. Let me first change this so that also the other contractor gets okay. Let me come to the next one. No problem with that assign. Uh come to project e to local. Yeah, and if I don't do the the, the location bit of it. You can just click or double click, click and click and assign this. Yes. So we have MJT, then we have local. Yeah. So what if now I want to, to bring, I like to filter out only the activities are done by local. So that's when I come to filter, filter by, or you can come to group and sort. There are two, two ways of doing the, you can, you can use the filter or group by sort. So let me first show you how you can use the filter. So these are filter, like these, these are inbuilt filters. They come that uh, you can filter, activities by maybe critical. Let's say critical and I say apply. It is only going to bring back critical activities. I think which are not, uh, most of them are not critical. So in case we want to add a new filter, click on new. Then you give it a filter name. So you can say these, these activities done by local, local contractors. Okay, then uh, now here uh, there is some logic like uh, you can do any any logic that you, you want. So there is this, there is a parameter, then kind of like a condition and a value. So I can I can come here and I look for activity code. If it is not there, we can use activity name. Yeah, there is no activity code. It would have appeared here. So we can say 
where activity name uh, can take contains. Okay, let's first uh, try to use this. Let's see, it's called. Uh, okay, I can't see there. Let me first uh, copy the exact name. MJT contract. Okay. Builder. Mm. Let's do for MJT. We can use the uh, activity name. Click on OK, then click on Apply. Uh, OK. Mm, let, let's uh, first go back and modify it a bit. Okay, uh, the problem with the filter, it doesn't, it doesn't have activity code. Let's see what we can use. Uh, okay. For the filter, it may okay using the filter may not uh, be possible since it can't filter by the activity code. Let's use the other option of uh, using the group. But I hope you you've seen how uh, how you can use filters. Anyway, I'll repeat how you use filters because they're supposed to be covered. So we're going to use group this group and sort you find it here yeah when you click on the drop down it will give you it may give you some options then if it gives you other options just click on customize yeah so you can see that now it is uh, grouping by a uh, wbs level the way it is grouping the activities by wbs level but we want it to group by activity code Okay. I want to look for it here. Okay, since uh, since I, I'd say that these other columns now they are treated as uh, these, like they, they are treated as these these other ones like uh, for start, finish, what what. If you create a uh, like they were created location and subcontractor, they can be realized now in the software. So that's what we can search for, not activity code. Let's see. Let's see location. You can apply. Enter the other location. There are two locations. Uh, meaning, okay. Yes.
Okay. Uh, first, give me like a minute. I first, let me first check here. Need codes. Okay. Anyway, I think I need to first uh, close the project and open it again. It's supposed to be detecting the, the other columns that I I created. Anyway, any question uh, about anything apart from that? Uh, how, come, how come you are searching for location, but you're putting in the subcontractor instead, not putting in east or, west, east or something. What, what is recorded in the other columns? Like the way you come here to columns and you search. I come to search and I search for subcontractor. Okay, it is already this side. Like what is recorded is not it is these ones on this level. Let me show you enterprise DVD codes. These two, these two are the ones that are can be recognized in the software. Like they are the ones that can be recognized as you add in columns. So I expect the same to be one of the parameters. That's why I'm not searching for Eastern North. If you go, if you try to search for Eastern North, yeah. Like in columns. It's not there. It can only recognize the other ones. Yeah, that's why it is what I've been trying to do here on the filter. Anyway, I'm just, it, it, I think it's a matter of refreshing the project the whole project because the activity code is not there. So we can only depend on these, the custom ones that we built. Here there is location, but it doesn't seem to be the location that we created. When you click on apply, it, they don't show. Okay, let me first put it back to WBS. Anyway, also another possibility can be that uh, codes. Okay, let me just cross the project and I open it again. It's called uh, an SB uh, building expansion. Close it. Come to projects, then I look for it. Yes. No, it's still well, filtered. Uh, I think need to uncheck that. Let me let me now search again and this. Yeah. Uh, so this is what I was asking. You see on location and subcontractor. Eh? 
Mm. These are two, two activity codes that you created, right? Yes. When you so when you are doing uh, uh, when you are filtering for location, you are instead putting in MJT, not east. I don't know if that is if they are not the two different things. Uh, I won't get what what you mean because this one, like the MJT belongs in the like activity code called the subcontractor. Then also under subcontractor we have local. So, yes. so I'm supposed asking. to filter by location or by subcontractor. Yes, but when you when you even you when you're filtering by location, yes, mm. and then contains the word mm. contains, right? Aren't you supposed to write then east or north? But you are putting sub uh, you are putting a contractor instead. Uh, and that, that was the activity name. There is no location. Okay, let me see. Location contains. Okay, let's see east. Uh, okay, I would have called it a different name. Yeah, um, no. Okay. There's also another location. Yeah. Okay. The the problem is, yes. uh, there is there is already okay. in built location in uh in Primavera, so I wouldn't have used the the same word. Okay. Anyway, let me let me repeat it with, with subcontractor. For those ones that have not got it, it is a uh, you go to the filter. Now I'm going to uncheck this. We're going to create a filter that filters out uh, the activities that are assigned to local contractor. So now that means we're using subcontractor is equal to local contractor. That is the filter that we want. So you come under filter, then you create a new filter. You can modify on the existing ones, but it is better you create a new one because you may need these ones later on. So create a new filter, you, you call it a name, maybe this is local, construction, contractors. Yeah, so when we come to logic, now here we search for subcontractor. See now it is appearing. The, the other time it was, uh, it was because it had not yet like updated into the database. So I was searching and it was not appearing. Yeah, so subcontractor, then you change the condition to contains. Then now you can type here the name. So the name was local contractors. Let me first, uh, I can't see there, but let me just type out it is the right spelling. Let me just stop on local, click OK. Then I come and apply this filter this this one check it click apply then it will bring back the activities that have local contractor like that so now that means we've changed it from grouping the activity according to wbs now it is bringing according to our customized way because now we've just created these activities belong to we're assigned to local contractors and I want to look at them. Then it has brought them. Yeah. Is it is it uh, clear? Is it uh, clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can see that 
the problem I was over delaying was uh, like the information is not yet updated. This is a database, uh, it deals with databases. So in case you face an uh, issue like that, just cross everything, then you open the project again. Yeah, so let me also try to see whether here we can, we can look for subcontractor. You see now it is, it, it is also showed in a group, eh? yeah. Like uh, we said, you can use sort or you can use group, group and filter. Then for group, just click on this. Then I will change from WBS label. Then search for the particular columns you created. Now I add, I created location, but there is some inbuilt location. So that was not a good word to use because there is already an inbuilt location and for each can detect it. So let me now use subcontractor where we can easily distinguish. So I'm just going to search for subcontractor. Yeah, then I click apply, then press OK. So let me first go on. Yes, so now it is filtering according to the contractor, like MJT, it brings the activities under MJT, local, it brings activities under local. Then these ones are not assigned any subcontractor, that's why they're under no subcontractor, like that. So you see, we we made the schedule very well, but now we just filtering, we're playing around with how should it be displayed. So it is from here that you generate reports. So they may tell you, the organization may say, we want to look at the progress that is done by MJT, observing how local is moving. And maybe they were all assigned the same buildings, but in different locations. So with that, you can easily generate a report that is detailing that particular information. Maybe another thing, if you use group by, yeah, ensure that the filter, you're not applying any filter like here. Because now here, if I come and I also now apply local filter, and the other side, um, um, I'm filtering according to like subcontractor. It's only going to be me local because you have, have restricted it to only bring local contractors. So ensure that no filter is selected so that you can bring all the activities. Then just come to group by and you select how do you want to group. So let me try location. I'm going to first try the first one. If it doesn't work out well, then I'm going to try the second one because we have to. Uh -huh, you can see now, these are activities in the eastern wing of the facility, these are activities in the north wing of the facility. Then to bring them, then these ones, we are not assigned the activity code, so they are under no location, like that. Okay, yeah, Mr. Bright, I've seen the message, yeah, everything is clear. Okay, yeah, so, do we have any question about what we've covered today? We've covered uh, constraints, then activity codes. Said constraints help you to manipulate the start and the finish dates of, uh, uh, of activities. So you can put a constraint like it is, it is a finish on, it's a finish on or after, it's a start on, a start on, start on that particular date or before, yeah as as uh, late as possible as early as possible is not one of the constraints but you can have it uh, you can use it uh, from start on or with a start on or before yeah. then from constraints we've looked at uh, the activity codes and the activity codes help you to arrange or to make reports according to what you prefer in your organization. So you can you can say we prefer by location, we prefer by subcontractor, we prefer by anything. Come create that particular activity code, then assign activities to those particular codes, then use filter by or group and sort by. We need to be able to generate, a, to organize the activities according to your activity codes. So Mr. Kevin, I think now you can see the difference that uh, 
WBS it is totally different. Uh, okay, it helps you, they all help you in organizing, but they are considering different things. Yeah, so other than that, uh, I'd even intended to use one hour, but I let's use the remaining 30 minutes uh, to look at uh, anything you have that is confusing on, in case you, you tried practicing and something confused you. You can bring it out, uh, you share the screen, then we go about it. So Mr. Luca, do you have? That was something that you tried and didn't come out. Uh, Mr. Luca, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, is there anything? Uh, there, 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 there.